Lord, hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Glory, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Glory, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Welcome to the service this morning. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, in your name, we welcome the Spirit to this place this morning, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you and we love you, Father God. We worship you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Father God, you are out from the beginning and the end. We thank you and we love you, Father God. You are the part of Lord God. We are the play, Lord God. Have your way, Lord God. Pray, Father God, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, Lord God. Bless the service day, Lord God. Bless our pastor, Pastor Randy, Pastor Randy G. Newman, Lord God. Bless the name of Jesus, our senior pastor, our prophet of this house, Lord God, you have given to us, Lord God. I pray, Father God, today's service will fall on good ground in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Bless the sick and shedding, Lord God. I pray for peace in Israel, Lord God. I pray for healing in our country, Lord God. I pray for love in our country, Lord God. I lift up all our family members in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Bless the youngest and oldest, Lord God. Bless the Lord God. Bless the all in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Have your way, Lord God. Have your way each one in our life, Lord God. Let your will be done in each one in our life, Lord God. If anything in our life, God, if you take it out of our life in the name of Jesus, Lord God. You are the power, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. Welcome to this place, Lord God. Welcome to this service today, Lord God. Have your way, Lord God. Have your way. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Today's scripture, hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Book of Psalms, 104. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, thou art very great. Thou art clothed in honor and majesty. Heavenly Father, have your way in our lives today in Jesus' name. Bless the word as it goes forth. And Heavenly Father, bless our pastor Randy Newman as he comes forth to do service today. In Jesus' name, amen.
as one of the church leaders in Rome. John Mark was moved by the Holy Spirit to write this gospel as a prophetic anticipation of a pastoral response to this time of persecution. He, his intentions was to strengthen the foundation in faith in Rome believers and in the need be to inspire them to suffer faithfully for the gospel placing before them the life and suffering, death, and the resurrection of Jesus, their Lord. And he was teaching them to have faith. This was a young Christian community who was uh, dealing with these teachings by John Mark, one of the leading apostles, one of the 12 elected, and oftentimes 12 mean birthday, new movement. And that's when Jesus came to, with a new movement, he came to fulfill the law and not break the law. He came to move in and birth out the church. We heard of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Those were symbols and synoptic gospels. But the book of Acts, which is an unknown author, some say Paul, some say unknown, that is the beginning of the church. Just like Jesus was crucified, they're going to persecute you the exact same way. But in this text, the power of faith, and it says, in the morning, as they pass by, they seen the fig tree dry up, from the roots. And Peter calling to remember the saying unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursed is withered away. And Jesus answered, saying unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea. And thou shalt not doubt in his heart, but shalt believe that those things which he said shall come. Have faith in God. See, that's what Jesus was teaching the 12 apostles, to have faith. Now, he's, what he's doing, he's teaching them. But the author is John Mark, one of the 12, when A.D. 65, 70, where Rome, why Jesus preparing to leave the scene. How? Teaching with power through Jesus Christ. And power and what? Authority. Mm -hmm. That's how he was teaching them. And, and the tree in that text meaning leadership. Now, we look at Pentecostalism, and we know that we do repent, every one of us, and be baptized in Jesus' name according to the confession of our faith. Acts 2 and 38, that's one of the scriptures. But, after you receive the Holy Ghost, you must develop character. Now, fig tree represents fruit. Character. We look at the tongues too much, but we never fully look at the character. And that's what Jesus is really doing to all of us. He's checking our character. You can speak in 52 tongues, but if your character and your gift is not on the same level, I've been saying it for a year and a half now, the people going to discern that there's something off in you. We got a lot of titles in this day. We have a lot of people fighting for position, fighting for a church, fighting to be on TV, fighting to preach, but they lack character. It's okay to have a position in the church and when your pastor puts you in position, but your character has to be intact. This is what he's teaching about, character. And when it says here, have faith in God, it says here, can be understood by the Greek objective, making Piston through it, literally, have faith in God. It is a sense of faith given by God and miraculous that requires a response of faith in God. From us, other examples, objective, include Luke 6 and 12. Uh, God, the objective of prayer. Mm -hmm. God, the objective of love. And God, the objective of fear. So even when your faith is being tested, you still have to have faith in who? God. Mm -hmm. You have to have faith even when you pray. He's teaching you about the fruit of the character, but in between that, there's faith you must have. Mm -hmm. You must have faith in God, not in people. And that's a dangerous thing to put your trust in people. Right. Because people are going to let you down. Man will drop you. A man will roll out the red carpet for you, and when you finish, he'll snatch the carpet up. Uh, that rug from under your feet. I've seen it done and have experienced it. 
I was at a service and I told this man what God was calling me to do. I won't say his name, I'm talking about it. And the Lord said, when you go back to visit, I want you to see something. This is why you have to have a life of prayer and fasting. The Lord said, when you walk in, greet the people and love them and embrace them. I walked in and hugged everybody going down the hall. He said, sit in the back, I want to talk to you. The real Holy Ghost is going to talk to you. The Holy Ghost is the teacher. Man is just used as a vessel. I sat in the back and I listened to the announcements. And they announced who was getting promoted. And right at the end, before I left, the Lord said to me, just finish me talking to you. He said, Randy, that man will promote his people, but he'll never promote my people. And this is in the church where I hear this. I said, Father. He said it again. He said, hear me again, son. That man will promote his people, but he'll never promote my people. When God starts talking, you better listen. Yep, those are instructions. That somebody said, that's too deep. I can't really deal with that. Oh, it ain't that deep, but it's, it's, it's reality. Amen. It's reality. Mm -hmm. and he promoted the people, and some were not. Wow. Mm -hmm. Sometimes God allowed me to see things. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it says, verse 20, in the morning as they passed through, they seen the fig tree dried up and from the roots. When you see a dried up tree, that tree has had its portion of living. Notice when man won't water a tree, God allowed it to rain. And when a tree is dried up, somebody come along and chop the tree down. Mm -hmm. And it says here, and Peter calling into remembrance, saying unto him, Master. And back then they called Jesus Master because he was the, the master shepherd, the master teacher. He had a gift of teaching. Mm -hmm. Behold, the fig tree which thou cursed it is withered away. And Jesus answered and said unto him, have faith in God. And that is the message. God wants us to have faith in him in spite of what we go through. Amen. Amen. In spite of what we're hearing, in spite of how people treat us. Yes. Have faith in God. God is not going to fail you. Sometimes God will say yes, sometimes God will say no, and right. then sometimes God will say wait. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. He wants us to have faith in him. Mm -hmm. He wants us to have faith in him. Believe him. How do we believe? Uh, we go back to Hebrews chapter number 11. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. But when you are born again of God, there's a seed of righteousness, but also a seed of faith, which is a grain. And in Hebrews 10 and 38 says, and the just shall live by what? Faith. Mm -hmm. Job said you can decree a thing, and it shall happen. Decree and declare a thing, and it shall happen. That's faith talking. Mm -hmm. You can walk through the center for two hours in prayer and decree some things. And it happened. I decree today God will somebody gonna send me a financial blessing. And it happened before you go to bed. Yes. I decree that when I won't check the mailbox, I'm gonna be greatly blessed. I decree that my family is gonna be safe. That's faith talking. Right. And that's what Jesus was teaching these 12 to have faith. And while he's teaching, he's preparing to leave the scene. He's getting ready to leave. And when, when, when he left, he told them he commanded them, he commissioned them. Go throughout, throughout the world and preach the gospel to everything we preach. Right. That's when he left the city. And as he's teaching, he's equipping them, right. pouring into them, giving them knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, and also to bear fruit. Galatians, turn to Galatians chapter number 5, starting at verse 22, and I want you to read that out loud. Church, laying hands on the people, God is checking your character. 
when the anointing settles over you and is finished doing his work, God is still watching your character. Amen. Mm. You're a greedy people and embracing people and even turning your nose at that people. God is still watching your character. You don't got to tell me who you are. I'm an apostle. Mm -hmm. Okay, Father, yeah. But where's your character? Not checking that character. You're an apostle, but where's your character? I heard one apostle say to me, let me be like God and redeem you. I've got my briefcase packed it up and walk right out the door. I don't have time for that. You're not God. There's only one God, and that's in Genesis 1 and 1. He sits on the throne. When a man starts acting like he is a God, he got some trouble. That's arrogance. Pride. And pride comes what? Before that, destruction. God is checking our fruit. If there is no fruit, it is dead just like this tree. It's been cursed. And I'll never forget one time I was at a service, a memorial, you know, a homegoing service. One of the mothers had died at the second church that I was at and attending. And the elder walked in and they changed the whole service. And I was scheduled to pray and they switched everything. And I sat in the pulpit kind of upset, but I was fasting. And I said, let that go. I went into an open vision for about 10 minutes. I seen a tree right in front of me. And the tree was withered in summer. A tree is not withered usually in the fall. And I said, Father, what are you saying to me about this tree? He said, Randy, when well, you're sitting, you're sitting among people who does not bear good fruit. Their trees have been cursed. And he was pertaining to leadership. And he kept telling me after that, he said, but there's a season coming when we're ready to release you from this house. Because I don't want your fruit to look like that. The second dream I had, I was going down South Park. If you go to South Park High School, where that bridge opens up, the first time in the dream, the bridge was on the ground. And I was walking on the bridge, and the bridge means great test, trial, and tribulation. And that's what I was going through. And I was walking down that road before you get to tops. There was big plants, one on the right and one on the left. And this old man was walking past me, shaking his head, no, old man being old ways. And I said, Father, what are you saying to me? He said, keep going, I want you to see something. So I went to tops. I can't tell you what it means in the spirit because I've been exposed to it. And I went into tops and the Lord spoke to me in a dream. He said, now go to the produce section. There was no fruit there. I said, Father, what are you saying to me? He said, remember, you walk into Tops. The produce manager I knew personally, he's a preacher in real life. There was no fruit. He was telling me the produce manager in the fruit section, that whole ministry, had no fruit. They did not have proper fruit or character. God was exposing where I was. I said, Lord, listen to this here. And I wrote it down and I told my mother, she said, said my great grandmother was just like that. She would walk around in dreams, different places. But people would understand this too. Dreams have messages. Dreams is a gift. Dreams will show you where you are in the spirit. What am I saying? While you're developing fruit, you go to a, another level. You soar in your gifting like the eagle. The eagle can always conceive where his prey is. And he go, before he soared down into the ocean, he know where the fish is. He would be one, two, or three. He'd get the first one right at the end. That's how God wants us to do with character. He wants us to soar in our gifting, but have good character in the same breath. And you can be removed, even in the church. If you don't develop good character in the of the Spirit in the church, God will remove you. I've seen it through the years. 2001, I was at a prayer service, and the Holy Spirit was going to be so heavy about one of the preachers. He said, tell him, if they don't remove him out of that pulpit, I'm going to remove him. And I mean, I spoke in tongues for 25 minutes and couldn't control it. And when I finally came back to myself, the Lord said, tell him again, if they don't remove him, I shall remove him myself. Several months later, whatever he was doing, he got caught. He suffered a stroke. Mm -hmm. Then he, he wasn't eating healthy. He was eating sloppy. So one of his teeth developed a, a big cavity in the back. They went to pull him in to and check his pulse. The man died in the dentist's office. Oh. They called me screaming and hollering. Remember that word you gave him about him? I said, I told you. 
and I wasn't the only one. The pastor gave the same prophecy. If you do not develop good fruit in God's kingdom, he will remove you, and you can be replaced. He'll have somebody sound just like you, preach like you, talk like you, pray like you, because you did not develop good character. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Jesus answered and saying unto them, Have faith in God. Verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, mountain means obstacle. Mm -hmm. Obstacle or hindrance. Mm -hmm. And how do we develop good fruit? When we confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. We must walk according to Galatians 5 and 22. St. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever shall believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. How else? Romans chapter 5 and verse 5. Would you turn to Romans 5 and verse 5 and read it out loud, please? Mm -hmm. Romans 5 and 5. And make it full, not ashamed, because the love of God is shed, shield, shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, which is given us unto us. Amen. And that's one of the two, the Holy Ghost. So if you receive the Holy Ghost, you also receive character, but you must be developed in the same vein. Uh, prayer helps, and then mountains are obstacles in our way. But you can, you can speak to the mountain, and the mountain can be removed. But you must pray in authority which we say binding and loosening. You must bind up spirits and then cast them out and then loose righteousness, standards, holiness, the word. Use the word as what? A sword. Right. Yeah, you must have faith. Your faith has to be mustard seed faith, which is a grain, which is very little. And then our faith is in who? The Lord Jesus Christ. Right. Not in people, not in the flesh, but in Jesus Christ. God wants us to have faith in him. And that's what he's pouring into these 12 apostles. Have faith in God. While he's preparing to leave the scene, have faith in God. And each one of them faced great hardships, tests, trials, and tribulations. John the Baptist, his head was removed. Mm -hmm. Then the one in Revelations, he was placed in a pot, a pot oil and did not burn. Apostle Paul, they said he, he was beheaded as well. He said, I finished my, my, my course. But he had faith in who? Christ. Yeah. They don't say much of death about Peter. But many of these apostles faced hardships. Paul and Silas was in prison. He was beaten because of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You will be tested in this faith. They're coming after you. It ain't the world that's coming after you. It's the people that you labor with that's going to come after you. Lie on you. Talk about you. Tear your character down. Try to demean you. It's the people you labor with. When Jesus said when he prepared for Holy Communion, he said, one of you will betray me. That's discernment and prophecy. He knew that he was sitting among a betrayer. He knew. He knew he was going to be betrayed. He knew he was going to be betrayed. He knew he was going to be betrayed. And um, Judas kept saying, Lord, is it I? But he knew it was him in the first place. Mm -hmm. I have a man right now who comes with always coming and kiss me on my cheek. God bless you, elders. Good to see you. I said, mm -hmm. God bless you too. But when the anointing is not on you, on something else. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts to me are not, are not God fearing. But I'm trying to tell you, he has the spirit of Judas on him. And he acts just like this leader. Mm -hmm. Don't think I don't see. Everything I see is not to be revealed. You know those who labor among you. The Bible says, know those that labor among you. You better know who you're ministering with, talking with, befriending, even on Facebook, Yahoo, YouTube. You better know who you're talking to. People may see you one way, but say something different when you're not in their presence. Right. Mm -hmm. You have to be very, very careful. Mm -hmm. 
And you want us to walk by faith, but as we walk by faith, walk in character, walk in deliverance, confess your thoughts before the Lord, walk before him with purity. Do like Abel did, bring the Lord a good offering. Not money, but fruit of the ground. Right. Meaning fruit of the spirit, good character. And if Jesus Christ does not see you in his image, because there's going to be a reflection of a mirror, he wants to see his image. And if he don't see his image, he won't make it into his kingdom. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I've had people come to me in dreams and say, Oh, I didn't make it in. Mm-hmm. One man screamed, No, I didn't make it in. I never, I'll share this with you in closing. There was a man that lived next door to me back in 2001, where I live now. And he did his thing, you know, the world wise, but he knew the Bible. It's one thing to know the Bible, but it's another to the Bible. Bible. So he passed away. He had chronic asthma. They found him on the floor there. And um, I had a dream about him one night. And this is before they mended the incinerators shut. Now they trying to scare you. I'm a scary person. And in the dream, he climbed through the incinerator and opened it up. It looked like he was chocolate black, like that chip right here. I said, Mr. Brooks, what you doing here? And I was standing in front of my door with a white pajama set on it, like it glowed in the dark. I said, what you doing here? He said, Randy, I got something to tell you. I said, I said well, what happened? It's hot down here. Oh. And you, you see what I'm saying? Those dreams, I said, I, I did look. And then right after that, three years later, I had another dream. This lady in the 84 was dating him. They were dating him. He was on the elevator talking. I'm standing right here, and he's standing right there where he's sitting. And he had no clothes on from his neck down. I'm telling you the guys on the street. I said, Mr. Bruce, what you doing here again? He said, I'm going to get that lady on the eighth floor. Five months later, she committed suicide. He came and got her. My brothers looked at me and said, You put them dog on dreams. And I said, Listen, I have no control over my gift. The gift control you, not you control the gift. Mm-hmm. And I told somebody three months before, I was walking down Perry Street, and I seen this lady at the bus terminal, the train. I said, there's a lady in my building that will be here before the summer hit. She died May 21st, 2005. And they said, how did you know that? I said, I can see those. That woman said, to me, she said, you got to get them. She said, you know that lady that won't be here this summer. Don't you? I said, she will not be here. She died May 21st. You know what I'm saying? You got to have character, gifting, really walking soberly with the Lord. And He wants us to walk by faith and not in our flesh. We're such a fleshly church. Oh, God is working on me. Yeah, but you've been working with that 20 years, ain't you? Huh? When I met you, you were still working with that. <laughs> when I met you, you still was battling that demon. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you've been on that same level. I know a lady right now to this day. I met her in '87 when I gave my heart to Christ. I received the, I received the Holy Ghost in '89. Don't you know she's still on that same level? And this is 2019. That same level wow. never broke. Never accept her call. Now she's home, sick, and destroyed. Because she would not obey God. God told her to leave her job. And she stayed and had her put on her uniform that morning and had a stroke going from one arm to the next. When God tells you to leave certain people, places, and things alone, He means what He's saying and say what He means. Am I persecuting her? No, I'm not. Will you obey the voice of God? And our last te- uh, chapter and verse. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 7. This is how God wants us to walk as we close in this message. The church has been ready to face some strong judgment. You watch what I tell you. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. Yes, sir. It says, For we walk in the prevalent by the sight. We are confident and willing rather to be absent from the body, absent from the body 
and to be present with the Lord. Amen. We walk by faith and not by sight. That was the main part of the text. God wants us to walk by faith, not by what we see in the natural. Right. We see a lot of mix up and mess up. We see all that. Yeah, you, you see that. Okay, you see that. Let's pray over this. Bind it, cast it out, and that's God to repair it. But walk in faith. He wants to walk in faith, no matter what it looks like. Everybody is not on the same spiritual wavelength. Everybody's not in the valley. And let me help you today. If you call yourself a prophet and prophesying and the prophecy fail, you're walking in the land of witches. Mm -hmm. I heard another prophetess tell me that. She said, if you hear people always prophesying, 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 and the prophecy fail, she said, baby, you better believe it. They're walking with witches and more lies. That's a familiar spirit and not the spirit of God. Now, I'm pretty sure y'all have heard that before. Mm -hmm. That's pretty heavy. Give you some mm -hmm. yeah, See, we tell you something. Up in here, we don't be playing with no God. God is who he say he is. Amen? Amen. Mm -hmm. So he wants us to walk in faith and walk in character. That's what God gave you this morning. You don't, you don't take our day to ministry. And I'm going to tell you something else. You can do message one and two. When you start going three, four, five, and six, you ain't studying. There's always a part two to a message. Because when God will leash you to release the message. Right. If I can stand up here and sit over here and recite all your messages, I'm a little concerned about that. Right. Yeah. You have to not study. This is not uh, just an ordinary platform. Because you have to be called to this. Right. And not call yourself. We have to be chosen and handpicked. So on today, let us walk in faith. No matter what we see, no matter who comes or goes, you won't always have that in your life. But stay in the faith of God and stay in God's presence, breath and life. We know that many should be here, if that's okay. But like I told Deacon this before, about a couple months ago, I said, you know, when they shut it down, you might what I tell you. People are gonna wish they had been here. It ain't because of me. Because of Jesus Christ. Because the door is always open. Right. You have a choice. You don't have a choice. Either you want to be saved or you want to live in sin. And some people don't want to live saved. They don't want nothing to do with Christ. But you want people to tell people when you die, oh, tell people I was all right with God. So, oh, really? Oh, but you kept up more best than a sinner. So we have to be very, very careful. What was the person told me? Tell me why I was all right with God. So, right after that, I asked God, I said, is she right with you? Don't you know five people came to me about a couple of weeks later, back to back? I had to ask nobody anything. Oh. And they exposed her. You better be careful what you say. Amen? Amen. Amen? At this time, we're going to have uh, Minister Maurice Hollingsworth close us out with a word of prayer. And everybody from Prophetic Fire and World Ministries, have a blessed week.